Live from the Business Radio X studio inside Renaissance Bank, the bank that specializes in understanding you. It's time for North Fulton Business Radio. And hello again, everyone. Welcome to another edition of North Fulton Business Radio. I'm John Ray, and we are not back in our home inside Renaissance Bank in Alpharetta, but we're looking forward to that day uh, soon. In the meantime, if you need a more personal experience for your bank, but yet you want to be with a bank that's big enough to handle pretty much any need you can uh, uh, throw their way, my suggestion is is to go to renaissancebank.com, find their local office. They have some 200 across the South ready to serve you and uh, pick up the phone and call the number. And you won't get some call center uh, eight states over. You'll actually get someone in that local office that you can actually make an appointment with and go in and sit across the desk from. Amazing concept, isn't it? Uh, If that's the kind of relationship you want with your bank, then that's what I suggest you do. And I know this personally because I deal with Renaissance personally myself. Renaissance Bank, understanding you, member FDIC. And now I want to welcome Dr. Jacob Chaco, and uh, doc- Dr. Chaco is the dean of the Clayton State University College of Business. Dr. Chaco, welcome. Thank you, John, for having me. Thank you, and you gave me permission to call you Jacob, and I appreciate that. Um, uh, so it's great to have you here. Congratulations on the work you're doing at, at uh, Clayton State, and, and that's one of the reasons why we want to have you. But uh, before we get into some of the accolades and, and accomplishments that are happening uh, with the College of Business, let's talk about Clayton State University and introduce the institution for those that don't know it very well. Uh, well, thank you, John. Uh, Clayton State is just about 50 years old. Um, we were uh, founded as a two-year institution, and now we have. Uh, then we became four-year, and now we have graduate programs. Uh, the College of Business was uh, there from the beginning. Um, our BBA graduates uh, we have for the last thirty years, so we've had four-year degrees for the last thirty years in business. The business school uh, at Clayton State is accredited by AACSB which is an accreditation, I call it the gold standard of business accreditations, uh, over 100 years uh, old. uh, And just about 5% of business schools worldwide have been able to achieve that. So we're very, very proud of it. Um, We have about 32 wonderful uh, doctorally qualified faculty and little over 1,300 students in the college business. You know, I, I I think a lot of folks they um, when they think of the university system that's in Georgia, they think of the obviously uh, UGA and Georgia Tech and so forth. Um, nobody realizes how big Clayton State is. Well, uh, Clayton State um, is we have a little over seven thousand students. Um, mm. We are. Uh, we are located in Clayton County and hence the name Clayton State. And mm-hmm. We are about five miles from the airport. So uh, a lot of people, uh, I, I live uh, in the north of uh, I-20 and a lot of my neighbors have never been to Clayton State. And when I tell them it is so close to the airport, they are truly amazed that why they have not heard about it. So we are kind of a cleverly, uh, or um, I would say cleverly held secret or, we are strategically uh, hidden. Uh, that's what I would like to call for a 50-year-old institution. Let's talk about the some of the strategic initiatives of the university in terms of, of how you're uh, e- expanding and some of those um, uh, some of those ways you're reaching out further into the community. Yeah, so Clayton State uh, quite some time ago decided that they want to be the uh, university known for 
uh, community engagement. Uh, we call it campus-based community engagement. And uh, with what we usually we started doing is we started engaging our students with the community in their educational process. So uh, we, about a few years back, Carnegie uh, uh, system recognized as, as one of those institutions that are uh, known for community engagement. So uh, that is the primary, primary goal. Uh, of course, like every other university, we, we have the enrollment growth initiative. We have the brand building initiative. We have the <clears throat> innovations and experiential learning initiative. But everything is about community engagement. Um, that's what I would say is the is what distinguishes Clayton State from that uh, from other universities in the university system. Now, uh, oh, go, ahead. go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, for the College of Business, we have being part of Clayton State. We have also embraced that, and so we our mission focuses on impactful engagement and uh, career focused curricula. Impactful engagement is really engage is from the belief that an engaged student is a successful student. Uh, we really try our level best to make sure that our students are engaged from day one and they stay engaged throughout. And, and engagement could be academic engagement. It could be uh, cultural engagement. It could be if they are in residence halls, we have learning communities kind of engagement. And we try to keep, keep it that way. And so uh, we have several ways of engaging students, and I can talk more about it uh, if you want me to do so. Um, so that's, that's what the business school, we would like to be known for impactful engagement with our various stakeholders. You know, so let's, let's talk about, I, I guess, a little on the ground, if, if, if we can, okay. about the kind of, uh, the profile of your students. And we were talking about this a little bit before we came on the air, uh, about you have a high proportion of your students that are first time college students from their families. So right. t talk about the particular needs that your students have that you address uh, uniquely because you understand them. Right. So uh, over 60% of our students are first generation college students. And what that means is they have not had the uh, opportunities to have role models that many of us have had at our own homes or uh, within the network that our families have. And so we, 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 we make sure that we build in that those interactions that our students will have during their educational journey with us. Uh, we do that through having speakers uh, come to campus. For instance, you just talked about um, uh, Mr. Burkholder, uh, yes. who was who was the link, Mr. Lincoln guy, who was there the day before yesterday. Yesterday we had um, another speaker who was the executive vice president for uh, Delta Credit Union, Pam Davis. We had uh, the day before yesterday a speaker from Society for Human Resources Management. So we try that. That is just with the College of Business. I'm saying. So I'm not even talking about the university. And in the university, there are a lot of speakers. And why we do this is to make sure that our students ha are exposed to as many of those uh, co-curricular uh, speakers as possible so that as, as we all hear something, that is that one person or that one talk that really changes people's minds and really influences them to do something. So we really, really try to do that a lot more than many of the colleges I really know. Uh, and and so that's that's one of the things. And the second thing uh, we also talked about earlier is that we have what we call the career spine built into our curriculum in the business school. What we call the career spine is that in the various required business courses, we have built in career management activities. And these are graded activities. Up to 5% of the grade in the course is, is spent for that. So let's say 
when a student is taking into the business as the first course he or she takes in the business school, along with that course, there are assignments that, uh, that are tests on aptitudes, that we do aptitude testing of students to see what they're good at so they can discover themselves. When they come to, uh, for example, economics course, that's another first year course, they may have uh, uh, a career building activities called, called informational interviewing. We ask them to go. Um, so if they say, okay, I want to be an accountant, then we ask them, okay, as part of this course, I want you to go find an accountant and interview him or her about what uh, the job of what is the profession, what does the profession call for? What is it like to be an accountant? And another course may be on resume writing. A third course, maybe we focus on LinkedIn account building. So what I'm trying to say is that because we, we, because we believe that professionalism has to be built in for our students, we do that in our curricula over and above covering the textbooks and other materials other colleges do. Mm, great work. Uh, uh, we're, we're here with uh, Dr. Jacob Chaco, and he is the dean of the College of Business at Clayton State University. Um, let's talk a little bit about the question that uh, I'm, I'm tired of asking, and I'm sure others are tired of answering, which is um, how you fared during the pandemic. And you've had uh, uh, some growth in your online business program, uh, e- even beyond what the effect of the pandemic would have would have brought about, right? Right, right. So, uh, so Clayton State, I would say, was more better prepared than most universities for for the uh, for migrating to online education. And the reason I say that is in the mid eighties, Clayton State, I think, was the fourth institution in the country to adopt laptop. Uh, became become a laptop university in the mid eighties. Mm. So, so we have had a culture of um, using uh, personal computers for all students and uh, all faculty. And we we started online or blended education starting in the nineties. So, uh, by that, what I mean is that a lot of our faculty members, a majority of them, already have a lot of online resources even for their face-to-face courses, so that the students can go and listen to a lecture if they wanted to after the class had ended. So that really helped us uh, go go virtual very quickly and very effectively. Um, as to the enrollment part, yes, um, about four, well, a little over three years ago, we decided to launch our MBA program in the online version, in addition to on on campus. Our MBA was about 15 years old by then, and so we decided we'd go online. Since that time, in the last three years, the enrollment has more than doubled. So when we started, we were around 150 MBA students, and now we are about 320 or so. And why that is important is if you look at Enrollment in MBA programs, in various MBA programs in the country, you will hear that MBA enrollments are down in most places. And there are lots of reasons for that. So, so we, we have uh, been very successful in that space. Um, our graduate enrollment growth, and mostly because of virtual instruction, has been over 125% over the last four years. So, uh, we we've uh, we believe that we have done well. Uh, our faculty members, I need to really attribute this to our faculty. They have um, embraced uh, virtual education by going through our online academy. We have several um, uh, national training programs that our faculty are required to complete before they can teach online. So. It doesn't become a correspondence course. Only difference is we use a computer. That's not what we're trying to say. So we need to make sure that our student success remains the same. And we try to do everything we do face to face. The only difference is it's online. Gotcha. Now you have 
developed some uh, particular degrees in strategic leadership, uh, supply chain. Um, I know there's a the fintech fin, uh, fintech area of study that you've uh, developed as well. Why don't you address those? Yes, thank you. So um, our mission talks about career focused curricula. So we want to make sure that the programs we offer are appropriate for the the student demographics that we offer too. And they are focused on career building. Uh, we do not believe our students come to us to discover themselves. Uh, they, they have their goals in front of them, and we try to build on that. So given that, our MBA is very popular. I'm talking about the graduate programs now. But then we started seeing that there is a whole group of uh, uh, students uh, mostly non-business students um, in the south side of Atlanta who are frontline supervisors, frontline managers who are trying to get to the next level. And look, looking at that, we did a brief uh, study of a small population and we found out that the, one of the things that they're lacking is leadership development skills. So, so we developed a program called uh, Masters in Strategic Leadership Development. Uh, we as you know, the University System of Georgia doesn't allow for duplication. So we went through the whole system schools, and there is only one other leadership program similar to ours, not the same, that is at Columbus State. So we, it's a very customized program. We, we launched that last January uh, 2020. With, by the end, by December of 2020, we had received over 275 applications and uh, admitted about uh, about a hundred students. Wow! So, yeah. So this is a program we require them to have work experience. As I said, they have to have an undergraduate degree. They need to have work experience. They need to write an essay. So these and and of course they have to have a GPA requirement, which is uh, for normal admission. It's about a three point out of a four. So this is forced, and we have senior vice presidents, executive vice presidents in that program. And we also have middle managers in that program. So I think that's the program that really meets the need of that group of folks. Uh, the supply chain analytics is another program that we've come up with. And again, um, it was uh, developed and launched last fall. And the reason is we are in the supply chain logistics mecca, uh, the world's busiest airport, the uh, the Savannah port, and of course, the road system. So um, we have focused on, and there is a huge need, and we have a lot of supply chain partners on the south side. They came to us and said, what they need is people who are well-versed in analytics, looking at um uh, providing a dashboard to supply chain companies and to their clients. So we partnered with Computer Science to launch that program where uh, we have uh, about four courses from Computer Science where they talk about uh, data visualization, data uh, analytics, et cetera, and then about six courses in supply chain management. Mm -hmm. um, again, very, very focused on that industry and that need. Um, so, and that's how we, we look at, I mean, what does the industry need and we try to provide that. And that comes from our engagement with industry. We are very focused on that. Mm. Uh, now I want to draw a circle around this just to make sure this is clear, <laughs> clear for folks uh, um, that you've, you've developed all these programs. Uh, you've got, uh, an MBA program just for folks that want to uh, pursue their MBA right. that uh, again is, is AACSB accredited uh, the same accreditation that's held by UGA, Georgia tech, Emory, Kennesaw, what have you. Right. Um, but you're the sixth most affordable online MBA program. Did I mm -hmm. get that right? Yes. I mean, uh, different rankings have different, but, we are one of the best values in town, I would say. 
Yeah. I mean, there's, I guess there's a lot of bang for the buck, uh, as it were. Correct. Right? Yeah. Correct. Um, okay. Correct. Uh, yeah, I just had to draw, draw a circle around that because that's awfully interesting, uh, particularly for folks that, like you say, um, they kind of know what they want and, um, you know, they are doing it on a budget cause they're doing it out of their own pocket or whatever. And, um, uh, you know, they, they need a good alternative. Right. And, um, and we are very proud of that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the value, uh, of, uh, of our program. So to me, uh, it is value is very simple. It is, uh, uh, quality over price and, um, the quality measures are through accreditations that, uh, uh, you know, that are uh, achieved by or attained by institutions, which means that we have to have uh, qualified faculty. They need to remain qualified. They need, I mean, we, we get through, we get assessed. Uh, AACSB comes around every five years. In fact, our next review is next week. Oh, wow. Uh, so, so, so there is that quality part on the, on the other side, as you said, the price is, uh, the university system charges for these programs, especially a tremendous, comp- I mean, very low compared to our competitors. So the value is very high. Also, I ask uh, uh, students to always look at the placement. How, how are the graduates doing? Um, now the governor, uh, the state has websites that, that shows, uh, that tracks graduates of programs uh, six months, three years, six years after graduation. And uh, our, our numbers for our undergraduate and graduate students, salaries, et cetera, are quite impressive. Um, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm just saying those are all things that add to the value of a program. Absolutely. Um, folks, we're here uh, chatting with Dr. Jacob Chaco, and he is the uh, – Dean of the College of Business at Clayton State University. Now, you've just signed a MOU, as I understand it, with Dalton State. Explain what that is and what uh, the the, uh, opportunities that offers you to expand your reach. Thank you uh, for asking that. Yes, we have uh, signed the MOU with Dalton State and Georgia Gwinnett College mm. and uh, with their business programs. And, and what that means is these are institutions within the university system that do not have graduate de- degree programs. So through the MOU, um, what, what we are able to provide their students is that while they are uh, senior students, they are already – uh, they already have access to our student advisors to to meet with them and talk to them before they graduate with their undergraduate degree if they want to go into any particular graduate program. Um, we also share a lot of information at their um, uh, in their capstone classes so that the students are able to uh, have firsthand knowledge about the programs that they would like to get into. So. That seamless uh, transition from their undergraduate to graduate, if they choose to do so, uh, is is made possible because of that um, because of that particular partnership. Also, um, because these programs ha- are offered both face to face and online, not all of them, most of them, uh, the students don't really have to move from Dalton or from Gwinnett and come all the way down to Clayton State to take classes. They could take it uh, virtually. They could uh, attend half classes face-to-face and half virtually if they wanted to. So it, it opens up a lot of uh, a lot of channels. But most uh, critically, it is the information sharing. I think their faculty members and our faculty members work together the, so that students get all the answers they need before they graduate. That sounds like a tremendous opportunity for those students uh, that uh, particularly those that, uh, you know, aren't able to travel long distances, maybe, and certainly maybe have a job that keeps them from doing that. uh, And they can pursue their studies online uh, with a uh, accredited graduate program. Correct. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's uh, awesome. Are, are, do you think there are more of MOU possibilities down the road uh, for you? Yes, yes, we are, <clears throat> and we are working specifically with programs that uh, that would benefit that partnership. So, Atlanta Metropolitan College, and, uh, we are working together with them. We also are working with some of the technical schools like uh, Atlanta Tech uh, for some of the students to get into some of the programs, not all of the programs. So, but uh, one other thing I forgot to mention this partnership does is that we also align our curricula, both our curricula so that the students have an easiest transition. Also, the duplications are cut down. So, for instance, Dalton State is also ACSP accredited. So we are assured of their quality. Uh, they also have a supply chain major like we do. So we have aligned our courses so that their students coming into our supply chain analytics program will not have any issues whatsoever. Similarly, Georgia Gwinnett has a, uh, a, has a supply chain program and they want to get into our analytics program. So those kinds of alignments will only happen when the faculty from both institutions sit down and discuss the curricula and make sure that the students have a um, seamless transition. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, uh, great work here from uh, uh, Dr. Jacob Chaco and uh, the entire uh, team there at the College of Business at Clayton State University. Um, so let's let's talk about how companies and employers can uh, plug in and benefit from the work you're doing, the, the students that you're turning out into the world, and how they can help. I mean, I'm, because you're clearly looking for um, to bring real-world world experience to your students and augment what they're already doing. So t- let's talk about both well, those. Well, people. thank you, John. Um, yeah. Let me... And let me say that uh, that's exactly what we are trying to do. And we started what we call the Corporate Partners Program for the College of Business. And, uh, these, and we have a, a few very large companies, some of the small companies who are in the program, and we can't continually add more and more. So what the Corporate Partner Program does is we make sure that the companies are introduced to our students and the students are introduced to our our companies through various activities. Uh, For instance, uh, uh, Fastenal, uh, which is a logistics company, is a corporate partner. They have built what they call the Fast Track Program, where our students work for them for uh, 27 months while they're students, they're paid. And they go through three rotations of uh, nine months each before they are absorbed as full-time employees. Uh, Forward Air uh, is another corporate partner. They, they, their students, our students work with them for 12 months. Um, we have several CPA firms where our students work for them during the tax seasons, every tax season, before they are absorbed as full-time students. So the corporate partner program is really where we allow the corporates uh, to come uh, have a seat on our advisory board to guide us on the curricular changes. They also become, uh, they also have members of their employees on our executive in residence program that works with the career spine. They also have employees who participate in mock interviewing. And also we promote their brand to them by having them as speakers. For example, uh, I mentioned about Pam Davis, uh, who is an executive vice president, uh, the C-level officer at Delta Community Credit Union. Now, Delta Community Credit is the largest credit union in, in, in not only in Georgia, I think in the Southeast, and it's, la- it's a, one of the largest financial institutions. But most people hear about Truist and Wells Fargo and Bank of America. so. These companies also have to do a lot of brand building to attract the best and the brightest to come to them. Fastenal is another example. UPS is well known. FedEx is well known. Fastenal is not. So 
the corporate partners program really is a marriage we create between students and employers. And, um, and we do that by having speakers come and talk to them, by having them showcase their company and the opportunities to students, by requiring students to do internship with them, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's our career spine was built for that marriage between corporates and our students. Uh, this is awesome. Uh, great, great work here from, uh, uh, the college of business at Clayton state university, uh, uh, Dean, Dr. Jacob Chaco. Um, Jacob, this has been great. And, uh, uh, really, uh, great to have you on and to hear about the, the great work you're doing. Uh, so let's get to the, uh, important question here. For those that have heard something here that makes them want to be in touch, uh, maybe a company that wants to get connected in some way, or, or a potential student wants to learn more about the, your programs, uh, how can they get in touch? Well, uh, I would say the best way, especially during the pandemic, is, is our website. Uh, the university is www.clayton.edu. That's C-L-A-Y-T-O-N.edu. Um, or you could go to COB or College of Business at Clayton.edu. Um, the programs are all available there. We have certificates for those people who are not looking for another degree. Uh, for example, if you already have a master's degree, an MBA, and you wanted a certificate in digital marketing, for instance, because that's a new thing. You can just come and take the four courses that is required for that to get the certificate and more importantly, the skills. Mm -hmm. uh, one other thing, uh, John, I forgot to mention is that we try to build certification within our programs. So when a student, for example, let me take the digital marketing example, not only that they get the concentration in digital marketing and maybe a marketing degree, they also get to pick up Google Analytics certificate or uh, uh, certifications by different professional uh, players, which make them much more marketable in the marketplace. Mm. Great stuff, folks. Uh, go check it out. Uh, the College of Business at Clayton State University, uh, Dean, Dr. Jacob Chaco. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you on. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me, and I wish you the best. I, you, you do a wonderful job, and I, I look forward to listening more podcasts in the future. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Uh, folks, just a quick reminder uh, as we wrap up here that if you have administrative tasks in your business that you need to get off your plate, if you have uh, uh, bookkeeping needs or administrative tasks that uh, really you need to outsource, so that you can spend time growing your business. Uh, here's my suggestion. Go to officeangels.us and you can check out the various services they offer. Um, an even better idea is just to give them a call. Uh, call the chief executive angel over there, SES Cabido. She's at 770-442-9246. Now, SE has been doing this for 20 years and uh, she does terrific work. And I know this myself because I use her services. Um, so she's, uh, she and her team are awesome. And what they do is, uh, she finds out what your need is and then she picks an angel or two that would be the best fit and they fly in, get the job done and fly out and they do it on an ongoing or as needed basis. And they do virtual work. They've been doing it that way for, uh, the two decades they've been around. Uh, so, uh, give Essie a call at 770-442-9246. Tell her I sent you or go to officeangels.us uh, for more information. And just a reminder, folks, this show, North Fulton Business Radio, is on all the major podcast platforms. North Fulton Business Radio is a search term. And if do, do me a favor, and it's really not about me. It's about our guest. Um, go on and find the show and subscribe. North Fulton Business Radio, again, is a search term. And uh, give us a five-star review. 
And the reason is, is because it helps people find the show so that they can take advantage of the services uh, that are offered by our guest and um, connect in some way. So uh, I'd really appreciate it if you could do that for us. And, uh, and you can also connect with us on social media if you like. Uh, we'd love that too, of course. North Fulton BRX is the uh, uh, handle on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and so forth. So check us out there as well. So for my guest, Dr. Jacob Chaco, I'm John Ray. Join us next time here on North Fulton Business Radio.